In long years, they let him out of the home. Excitable boy, they all said. Well, he dug up a grave and built a cage with the bones. Excitable boy, they all said. Well, he's just an excitable boy. Hello, everyone. It's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel. Tap the notification bell. I would appreciate it. Majorly. And um, let me just try to clean this up a little bit. I realized some mistakes that I made. And, um, you know, this is about the, um, about the two missing kids, J.J. Vallow. Uh, Tylee Rain, Ryan, who remain missing, and I just was talking, I wanted to talk a little bit about the recent reports um, about the date, the October 2nd, and the surveillance footage of October 2nd, where, you know, Nate Eaton's got a new report about um, that, you know, as well as the most recent report about the wedding ring that Lori Vallow purchased, apparently with Charles Vallow's, uh, you know, um, credit card after he's, um, you know, well, after he's supposedly dead. I believe my theory uh, is that these three, these people, I believe all three of them fake their deaths. Charles Vallow, Tammy Daybell, and Alex Cox. I do believe that theory. The other theory about uh, the Langford family. And uh, the New York, uh, the Northern Mexico massacre, and some of these people being involved in that. I think that's. I've realized that that's not true. But I was trying to connect some some kind of dots because there's something much bigger going on. There just has to be. There's no way that they're doing all this for a little bit of insurance money. It's got to be for much much bigger money, and they got to be getting help. You know. Um, some serious legal help and just help in the system, you know. Um, if if I if I'm even close to being right about them faking their deaths, then you know they're definitely getting help on that. You know, that's they're not that they're not pulling that off on their own. And I'll, I I you know I, I do believe that, and I, I'll make I'll note that you know, none of those autopsies have yet to be released. You know, that doesn't mean I'm right, but so. Um, but, I mean, the one thing that got me to realize that, you know, basically this car seat, you know, that I, I, I said that it was a car seat. I really did. I mean, Nate Eaton's, Nate Eaton's report here, it's almost like, you know, they knew, they, they wanted this to be filmed. There's something about it, you know. It's like they're trying to prove that, um, they're trying to, they're forcing to prove that Alex Cox attempted to shoot and kill Brandon Boudreaux. You know, and it's not just for the life insurance. It's for something else. I just can't figure it out exactly. But I was the one who was saying this was a car seat. Okay, before nobody else was. And, the, and you know, and in this report, Nate Eaton says, you know, after a closer examination and they zoom in, you know, he can see that it's a car seat that he's carrying it out and that, you know, it was actually maybe Chad Daybill on the on October 2nd and that Alex Cox wasn't there. And he's basically putting forth this, this, this idea that, um, you know, the Jeep Wrangler that supposedly Brandon Boudreau, uh, Boudreau claimed um, somebody took a shot at him from the rear window of a Jeep Wrangler, somebody with a shot, silencer on October 2nd, you know, um, you can't, uh, with that type of vehicle, and Nate Eaton explains this in this video. I don't want to go over this and over this, but that you have to remove the, the, the spare tire from the back in order to lift up the back window or roll up the back window, whatever, and, um, and remove, the, the, you know, remove the, the rear seat, uh, I guess, to have enough room for somebody to sit back in there, which, you know, um, I, still, I still find to be ridiculous. I do. And, um, but whatever, I can't, I can't necessarily figure out why they're trying to, 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 I mean, like why, if you're attempting to murder somebody, okay, why would you take the seat and tire out and display it at a storage facility where you're guaranteed, guaranteed to be filmed? And they knew that, the funny thing is, is they knew that people wouldn't look at that right away, but they knew lay up down the road they would, you know, down the road after, because that's before Tammy Daybell's dead. That's before Alex Cox is dead, obviously. And in my, you know, I think, in my opinion, they all knew that that was going to be coming and those were going to be fake. 
but and people would come back to this and look at this. But again, it's just there's no way that this these kind of elaborate plans would be just for insurance. And even if it's just for insurance and they're just a bunch of goofballs, you know, no, that makes it for for a million bucks. And and, and Charles Vallow's insurance didn't even go to Lori. It went to it went to his sister, you know. So there's something else bigger going on. I just can't exactly figure figure that out. Um but at the end of it, you know, um, you know, these three people would supposedly be dead. In my opinion, they f- they will have faked their death. So, basically, any crimes they commit in the future, you know, you can't be prosecuted for crimes when you're a dead person. You know, um, so there's that. But um, at the the you know the final person to die would be Alex Cox, and um, I mean that's that's. <sighs> That's the extent of this video, other than I wanted to show you a few pictures between Alex Cox. The one at the Yellowstone Park was, was the last photo of, of, <clears throat> of, uh, of uh, Tylee Ryan and JJ, actually, is in the, in, the, in the picture. I think that's from like, um, I think that's from like October 8th, you know, and actually the, it's this one right here, and the authorities, you know, um, asked uh, the public's help for anybody else that had, might have had. Uh, any video footage of, of them being there. This is some kind of surveillance footage of the park camera that took a, sh- a still shot. And that's the only one they provided. Well, the, <clears throat> excuse me, there was actually another one with Lori and either Tylee or Lori and, 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 and JJ. I don't have that up here. And there's Alex Cox in the background. You know, and actually to me, that Alex Cox for some reason seemed to look much different than than the other Alex Cox, like the ones in the body cam footage from, from Dateline, from the shooting of Charles Vallow. And I'll go through that in a second, you know. And, uh, you know, whatever. You know, um, that's just what I think. And uh, I think it pretty strongly. But I will say that I realized, you know, that basically, you know, this, this thing that, um, this car seat that, uh, that Alex Cox is carrying out of here is, in fact, a Wrangler car seat, you know. So this, is, this is the old one. Where's the uh, the new one? Um, but if you'll notice, I mean, Nate Eaton is making this video to basically point out that on that date, on October 2nd, okay, it looks like it's Chad Daybell there. And then he goes into the explanation of, uh, you know, the tire needing to be removed from the Jeep Wrangler in order to open the window, you know, and that B- Brandon Boudreau, Boudreau, Boudreau had claimed that somebody took a shot at him from a re- the rear window of a Jeep Wrangler, you know, with a silencer in broad daylight at 9.15 in the morning in a pretty nice, fairly, you know, semi-affluent um, suburban area where homes are basically right next to each other and so forth, whatever. It doesn't, it's, 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 it's bananas. It's, it's total bullshit. And, and, and then three weeks later, um, Melanie, his, his soon to be ex-wife and Alex show up at his parents' house in, in Utah and she gets arrested for tra- trespassing, you know, which is a misdemeanor. It's totally nothing. And Alex is there and, 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 you know, and he, 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 you know, his parents, Brandon Boudreaux's father calls 911, shouts at her and makes a big scene on, in the 911 call. Three weeks later, after supposedly they attempted, maybe attempted murder on him you know, and pose, (laughs) you know, pose, not them specifically, but other members of the family pose in front of, basically posing in front of a storage facility unit camera um, with, with items from the vehicle that, you know, supposedly was part of the assassination attempt. It's totally ridiculous. It's on purpose, you know. Okay, so, but but Nate Eaton is totally like laying it out here in this video. And like I said, I, I said that was a car seat from the very beginning, and I was connecting it to the northern northern Mexico massacre, which I now correct because it is it is this seat. You can actually see Alex Cox when he's carrying it out. He's holding these two little handles, which is pretty difficult to do. Alex Cox is pretty strong, without a doubt, um, and he carries that out all by himself. You know, um, in uh, in this video. Uh, right here, where I just had it with Nate Eaton here, doing uh, right here. They were there for three minutes. You can see them entering, working their way to the same door. She was so, and going into the building. You, you know, um, this man walks differently and 
carries the tire out rather than rolling it. The man we think is Hawk also and here he is carrying out by himself without any help from Lord. And he's holding, hanging on to those two little handles right there. So it is the Jeep, Jeep Wrangler seat, you know. Um, you know, why they're driving that to the storage facility in another vehicle instead of the same vehicle that it came out of, why he's not driving the Jeep Wrangler to the storage facility to put that into, to put it back in, you know, that I don't know. And I don't know if there's something inside of that seat entire, you know, similar to what I was suggesting with the Northern Mexico uh, situation where there we're doing where there's some kind of drug smuggling operation going on. I, I I really don't know, and I couldn't possibly know. But I do know that if you are planning an attempted murder on somebody, like Brandon Brandon Boudreau claims, you know, on the day before this this footage happened, the day before when they're bringing the car seat in, and reportedly it's Chad Dabo with Lori, and the and the tire. Why would you? Why, why would you go out of your way to show this to a surveillance camera, you know, which you're, you're inevitably doing at a, a storage facility that is like guaranteed that you're going to be filmed um, instead of your home, instead of any number of places where you're not guaranteed you're going to be filmed, you know? And it's like they knew one day people would be coming look, to look at this, you know, which would somehow validate B Brandon Brudeau's story. You know, they knew that there would be two fake deaths or two deaths, two, I call them two fake deaths, down the road very soon. And there's just no way that this is all for a little insurance money. You know, you can't live off of a little insurance money for the rest of your lives and live well, live the way these people seem to be used to living. <clears throat> and uh, I will say that it's kind of odd, um, you know, the way that um, Brandon Brudeau Brudeau describes, you know, um, the assassination or the shooting attempt on his life and the 911 call in all the reports. Now you can only just get little snippets of it. There was a full 911 call, the entire call, except for the stuff that's redacted. The actual audio was with, with Justin Lum's, one of his posts and it's gone. I cannot find it anywhere, you know? And it's been removed. You know, I don't know if his lawyers, Brandon Brudeau's lawyers, requested it be removed because of, you know, their ongoing conflict with his ex-wife, or his, you know, or if the authorities removed it. And the, um, you know, the the nine one one call is heavily redacted, redacted in certain places. That that's Brandon Brudeau's car right there. Is his Tesla? I forget the exact model. It's a very expensive car. I right? sort of, you know, uh, that. That seems significant to me that he was driving an eighty thousand dollar car. It's a pretty nice car, you know, and living a pretty, pretty, pretty expensive lifestyle. You know, I just don't know that he was making that kind of income. Whatever, I don't know for sure. And I looked at some of his what's what looked to be like you know his LinkedIn page, his career and stuff, and um, I don't know. Doesn't didn't seem to add up too much to me, but whichever. But it's heavily redacted. So we and we don't know why like this entire page is gone. We don't know what was said. And and during the nine one one audio. That used to be somewhere. It used to be in one of Justin Lum's po posts. I'm fairly certain because I listened to it. That's when I heard like the the him say to the 911 operator that he had a Tesla, and that's like one of the things that I took note of. Um, but we don't know why it, in the 911 audio. This is you know it just goes silent during this. Plan. We don't know why this is all redacted. So did the authorities have that pulled back in? I don't know. But even when you hear Bram, Brandon Brudeau talk about it. You know, that he supposedly passed, you know, a parked car that took a shot at him, which is a little cumbersome because, according to him, you know, the person's in the back seat of the car with the gun pointing out the rear window, and he passed it, but as he's passing it, you know, in order for it, you know, it's it's difficult to get a, you know, I guess it, it could at an angle. But in this, in this explanation to, I think he's speaking to Adam Herbert's, even though this is Fox 10, they're using Adam Her Herbert's interview, you know, he says that all he could think of to do was to hit the gas, you know, but he gets, it, it does say that he was shot as he was dr pulling into his driveway. Like that's what this says here. Um, a lot of this red is redacted, but uh, Boudreau, Boudreau describes the shooting to the dispatcher. He pulled into the driveway of his new home around 9 a.m. when a bullet hit 
the driver's side window of, of his Tesla. So as he's pulling in his driveway, he got, you know, he got struck by the bullet at the driver's side window. And he says here that that's all he could think of to do was hit the, hit the gas and get out of there. It could be that he meant, you know, jam, put, put it in reverse and hit the gas and get out of there, like back out of the driveway. And, um, and then the car took off or it's, I think it tried to follow him, but even that's kind of difficult to totally envision if it's, if it's, if it's facing him backwards, cause it would have had to sort of to shoot at him from the rear window. Um, and then they go around the block you know, a couple times and he, I think they see each other and he's talking to the 911 operator, like while he's on the phone and the, and the car's not necessarily following him per, per se, but maybe went around the block and turned around and went, went down the street and turned around and they're facing each other at a, you know, he can see him, at, you know, at a diagonal or over at another street and then they turned away, and went away. But let me just play what he says and, and then pretty much just wrap this up. But before I do just show you a few pictures of um, Al, Alex Cox here versus the body cam footage on the day of the shooting of Charles. And, and this person looks to be, to me, to be different than the person on the body cam footage, the Dateline body cam footage that's not blurred out of Alex Cox of the shooting of, of, of Charles. I think that was, I've already forgotten, it was July 11th, 2019. October 2nd, Brandon says a bullet missed his head by inches as he pulled into his driveway in Gilbert. All I could think was someone shooting at me. What do I need to do? I need to hit the gas and get out of here. Police say the shooter drove off. A closer look shows the time. So, um, but like I was saying, uh, you know, it just sort of seemed weird to hit the gas and get out of there, but he's pulling into his driveway, so he's facing his garage, so he would have to put it in reverse and hit the, and, and, and hit the gas and go out of there, and I guess that's what he did. But before I go to those pictures, one more time, um, it, it just seems odd to me, the emphasis in Nate Eaton's report here in the surveillance footage, uh, you know, focusing on the October 7th, the second date, and then you have Lori... Valo purchasing her future wedding ring when she gets married in, in, in Hawaii on November 4th in, in Kauai, Hawaii, in Princeville, I guess, on the beach. Um, she purchased it specifically on October 2nd, you know, and this gets reported, I don't know, a few weeks. Uh, I don't know when this report was. This is uh, March 25th. That's the most recent one, and the enhanced video was March 12th. So two weeks later, you have, you know, here you have Nate Eaton talking about you know, the enhanced video that shows now that it was a car seat, like I was saying, you know, but it is the Wrangler car seat. And, um, you know, and then two weeks later, and that the, it's all about it, that, that, you know, on the second, it doesn't look like it was Co Alex Cox. It looks like it was Chad Daybell. And it now looks like the reason what they, the reason they were bringing those items in is because, you know, they were taking the, the tire off and, and bringing in the rear seat so that Alex Cox supposedly could get in there and, and take a shot at Brandon. Brandon Boudreau, Brandon Boudreau. And then two weeks later, the reporting on that Lori Cox, um, you know, bought the bought the ring on the second, the same day. You know, it's like they're 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 pointing us to the second. You know, and it's seems pretty obvious to me. So, you know, and um, I don't know. Okay, so the, the, these pictures here. I'll just do it very quickly. That's, you know, that's, um, you know, that's Alex Cox, obviously. And, you know, they're on a slight incline here, slight incline, okay? Um, and, and, and Ty Lee's not that far in front of Alex Cox, but she's not that short, you know, beneath, beneath him. But I'm not even focusing on his height. I'm not trying. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out to you just to point it out to you. I mean, the things that, I mean, the face, even though the, the, the quality of the picture is terrible, the face just looks different to me and the neck um, at, to, to, to this. That, that person just doesn't look, they're obviously close, but I just don't think like they look like the same person. And there's just something different about them. And, you know, even it's the, the neck in, in, this, in this, I believe this is on the left, this is the real Alex Cox. He's um, just got a stockier, thicker, you know, um, kind of stronger neck, but it's shorter. And like here, 
like even there, like, I, you know, this guy's kind of got a little bit of a more elongated, slightly thinner neck than this person. They're in different positions, granted, but I just don't think that that's the same person. I don't. I think this is the person who died, and I don't think it's the real Alex Cox. You know, um, I could have that wrong. But, and here's another picture of, I mean, Alex Cox was pretty big. He really was. That's why he's, you know, um, and this guy's kind of just doesn't have that kind of, that kind of girth, you know, this dude over here. And, um, you know, that's why he's able to carry out the, uh, the car seat by himself, whereas, um, with, with Lori and Chad report, you know, reportedly Chad, they have to do it together, you know, and he's even able to carry it out, you know, holding onto it with these clips with just his fingers, you know, which is probably a little bit painful, but he's got, he's just kind of strong. You can just tell, you know, he's, um, sort of did, uh, done manual labor a lot of his life. You know, he drove a truck. He drove it in his, in his, in this, in this body cam footage. He's talking to the police officer, police officer on his way to the, uh, uh, to the station, to, you know, telling him what he does. He drives, he drives a truck, a hazardous waste truck from, from, from Arizona to, 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 uh, to Arkansas, you know, a couple times a week. That's his main route, driving a truck. Seen a fair amount of dr truck drivers, believe me, in this story that I haven't, you know, um, they're just too remote in the story to bring into bring into the story. So that's the story there, man. That is the story there. I don't know. What do you think? Does that dude look like that dude? It looks different to me. This kind of guy just sort of looks a little dopey to me and doesn't look like the same person as this guy. And uh, I don't know. That's the story there. So I wanted to clean that up and uh, keep thinking about it. Well, thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. We'll see you in the next video. Later, man.